then they, you know, God, the Holy Spirit, can take that blindfold out of their life, you know. Yeah, you don't go to that and say, you go ahead, ask fast, and it's breaking in your tool. I was just wondering, like, if you do what you, what you say, because you obviously know, yeah, like well, wait, 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 wait. let's have a, a session on evangelism. Okay. Yeah, let me yeah. Yeah. Down. Yeah. go on now with this, and then yeah, we do a session on how to approach uh, Catholic. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. okay. So, we have the manipulation of the mind through true forms of religion. Uh, the word adversary in the Bible is. Uh, uh, Translated uh, aggressively and said that. It's cool. Okay, so let's go and have a good look at Ephesians 6, now, 11 and 12. And this is verses that we all know, you know, because they more than know. Uh, we use that, uh, the armor of God, you know, and uh, the house built on our warfare. But let us, you know, have a good look at what uh, really Paul is saying. Uh, so we're going to look at the Greek words, you know, the New Testament has been, Greek, been written not in English, but in Greek. You know, so uh, you have a translation. And now often, you know, the, the, the word, the original word, they not translate, not, they don't give the same meaning when they translate it. So let's see what was the original meaning. So Paul is saying, you know, that we have to put on the whole armor of God, and you might be able, he said, to stand, so to fight, the word there stand was the same word used in the, the famous Greek fight between two, you know, you know the Greek fight, when the two men is grab each other and they have to finish, you know, putting the other one, you know, shoulder on the floor. So this was the Greek fight. You know. So this word to stand is the word and it was used for this type of fight, fight face to face. So, Paul is saying, you know, God has given you an armor so you can fight face to face the devil. Mm -hmm. It's not a fight, you know, oh, you there, I'm here, let's, you know, send some darts, you know, or something like that. It's a face to face. And uh, he said against the wise. The word wise is the word metodeia. You know? And uh, metodeia is about the word methodology. So methodology means that Satan has a method how to attack him or you know attack or do his work. A methodology. Methodology is when you decide how to do something in a specific way. Mm -hmm. it? I mean, you sit down, you know, like to come for this mission, you have a methodology. Mm -hmm. you, know? you sit down with your leader and say, okay, we have to take the plane. You know, we're not going to swim, you know, there's no sand, but we'll take a plane, we will fly, you know, to Rome and all the, the you know, things that you will do here is your methodology for this mission. And Paul says that has a methodology, you know, a way of doing things, a specific way that he think about and strategize. You know, and instead of the devil, you know, this is the word that devil was. The devil, diabolos in another translation is, you know, to beat something until he breaks. And this is one of the mythology of Satan. You know, I think that advertising is the best example you know, on this. Because you know what advertising does? It beats something in your mind until it breaks through. Yeah. You're going to buy the <coughs> object that you don't need it, that you never want it and you find yourself buying it. Mm -hmm. And then you say, why did I buy these things? I don't need it, you know? And you put it there. Because advertising has you know, break through your mind to convince you of something. This is the work of Satan. To, you know, beat something in your mind so many times, in so many ways, you, know, you have to marry that guy. Look how nice he is. <laughs> oh, no, look how he works. Oh, look how he dress. Oh, you have to marry. Everybody says, don't get that man, don't get that man, you know, he's not a Christian, you know, I'm gonna, and you've got something in your mind telling you, marry that man, marry that man, and you end up marrying him. And you need a lot of counseling after that. 
is the devil, you know, is putting you know, things in our mind and you know, he knows how you know, we work and he does that. This is the devil's. But then he said, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, he says against wrestle is the word, you know, uh, to fight you know, against flesh and blood, but against principalities. The word principality is aroha. Uh, let's see if she knows it. Arche. Yeah, what's up here? Yeah. is the word, uh, the Greek word arche. And uh, this word is important. Remember before I said to you, you know, that at the door of uh, a, uh, a, of a village of a town, they were the, the, the elders of the town sitting there and they were judging and they were you know, responsible you know, for, the, for the things happening in the town. The Greek word for these people was arche. They were the elders you know, of, the, uh, of the town you know, and they had responsibility. Paul used this word for the principalities. We translate principalities, but Paul said they are the arche. So there are demons that stand on the door, you know, and they are, uh, they have responsibility to do what Satan tells them to do in the area, specific area, then they are commanded. You know, so this is the first level of demons, the archive. Mm -hmm. And we see then, you know, in the graphic, this principality, and we have seen that to be uh, the false religion, occultism, lust, and pride. False religion, and what is false religion? It recognizes the plurality of gods. So even if there are so called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God the father of whom all are all things, and we for him. And one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. 1 Corinthians 8. So, the false religions, they uh, always have a plurality of God. There are more than one God, you know, and different God from our Father. False religion teach that human beings can become gods. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eye will be open and you will be like God. No, we couldn't even. This is Satan is speaking to, to Eve. You know? And in the false religion, they say, they say this, you can be God. Like the New Age is an example you know, now we have today, you know, of Buddhism. You know, and they say that you are God. And you are the God of yourself, practically. First religion teaches that people can become just through the effort, like we were saying before, the works you know, that you do. Uh, for by grace you have been saved through faith, says the word of God, and not through works, good works. It's one of the hardest things to make, you know, understand to a Catholic person. And you now say by your works, and you say just by faith, too easy to say. You know, what do you mean, just by faith? You know, should I not do something? Because false religion always teaches that you have to do something to please God, to be accepted by God. It offers exotic knowledge only to the chosen and privileged ones. You know, false religion always had a, all they say only us, you know, like the Jehovah's Witness, you know, just for them the salvation of him to be here on this earth while all the others will be alienated. You know, so false religion always is just for them. Salvation or you know, whatever is just for them and exclude all the others. You say, but we Pentecostals we have the same. Okay, but that's another thing. <laughs> then uh, the other one is lust. The spirit of lust operates directly in the mind, giving sexual fantasy and the both developing provocative images with the need to reach physical pleasure without thinking about the consequences. 
It provokes the mind in such a way that it leads to the search for that pleasure. And each time the mind is deeper pleasure and greater arousal. And this is what last does. It's the spirit. Spirit and calm. And you know, practically it says that God cannot give you real pleasure. God cannot give you real abundant life. He cannot, it's just religion, you know, it's just boring God. If you really uh, need to uh, accomplish you know, what is your deeper needs, you, know, you need you know, to do this and it takes you, you know, always to, uh, to find in another person, actually at the end of the day, uh, is uh, to find in another person what you really need. This is, you know, fornication, adultery, and all of that, and all the deprivation, you know, that we see around. Is all of us we have need, and we have need of love, we have need of acceptance, we have need of security, and these things uh, we all need it because we are built to need these things. Why? Because through these needs we go to God. And God gives us love. God gives us acceptance. God, you know, gave us our security. And so all these things, they must you know, come to us through God. And we find them in God. But when we don't have a relationship with God, we still have the need. So we go to other men, and women, somebody else, to look, you know, to satisfy their needs. But the problem is that no other men, no other women can satisfy their need. Can satisfy for, you know, one minute, one month, one year, on the other hand, it will, you know, uh, come short to it. Why? Because he needs the same thing. And he wanted from you what you want from him. But two starving people, they're not going to help each other, isn't it? You know, you need somebody with a bread to help, uh, you know, somebody that is starving. And the only bread of life is Jesus. And the only one that can really, you know, satisfy your need for these things. Pride. In verse 9 we read that the people of God provoke God by tempting him. This reminds us of the completely different behavior of our Lord Jesus who refused to submit to Satan, providing to him that he really was the Son of God. However, he responded by mentioning the commandments. Do not tempt your God. Now, this is when, when Jesus was tempted by Satan. And you know that it wasn't Satan going to Jesus, it was Jesus going to Satan. That's the interesting thing. Because he said that the Holy Spirit, after baptism, the Holy Spirit took him to the desert. And the Holy Spirit said, okay, let's now, now you've been baptized, now you've been anointed by me. Okay, now let's go and look for Satan. We have something to, you know, arrange with him. You know? And Jesus went to look for Satan in the desert. He found him and he said, okay, now you're going to try with me while you're done with Eve. Let's see if it works. And Satan gave to, to Jesus the exact temptation that gave to, to Eve. That's good. Same thing. But, you know, even fall and Jesus said, it is written. Yeah. It is written. It is written. That's three yeah. times. And then Satan had to, you know, put his nails in the middle of the legs and go, you know, he couldn't win. And he was, you know, the fight and Jesus started with uh, with him. One of the temptations was about pride. You know, I said, if you are the Son of God, you see how Satan always uh, uh, tried to put in doubt your identity when you are in Christ. Last night we prayed, you know, for you, you know, our problem with identity. Because that's the, the problem with us. And Satan destroy our identity now, the gender. The gender is uh, the work of Satan to destroy the identity of the children. Yeah. And they will grow up without knowing, am I a man, am I a woman, am I, what am I? And uh, so is this, but when you know who you are in Christ, and you go to Ephesians and you read who you are in Christ, then you find your identity there. Yeah. And you know who you are. Because it's not important what you do, it's important who you are. Yeah. When you know who you are, then you can do the right things. But if you don't know who you are, it doesn't matter what you do, you'll be a failure. Yeah. Always. 
And after that, we, God works in our identity, works from inside. And pride, in Proverbs 16, said, Pride goes before destruction, and a hungry spirit before a fall. So God put down the uh, pride, and He will lift the humble. This principality has an easy grip because it is the same sin Satan made man commit, since he himself has fallen with the same sin. You know, Isaiah said, For you have said in your heart, speaking about Satan, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. This is Satan you know, when he said, you know, against God. His pride put himself above all others. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm